When my husband and I first bought our land, his parents were nervous about us moving to Maine because they said, oh, it's just a poor state and you'll never make it. I had gone to nursing school in Portland back in the 70s. My husband had gone to school in Vermont and we knew that we wanted to either buy or build a house in Maine or Vermont. Maine won out because it was closer to our families. We, everybody that's come to visit us who was worried about us moving to Maine now gets it. They know why we're here and they love to come and visit us. Hopping on the ferry if you just want to go out to the islands for the day, if you don't know anybody with a boat, it's a great experience. Whitewater rafting up at the Forks is so much fun. Hi, my name is Pam Shea and you can find your Maine job at liveandworkinmaine.com. Meet the newest member of the Maine Life team. This, my friends, is Rico Stelvio, the Italian stallion I've been waiting for. He's quite the catch. Reliable, edgy, and perfectly proportioned with a strong core. He has a front engine, all-wheel drive, and an eight-speed automatic transmission with a carbon fiber drive shaft. He's an alpha, but then again, so am I. I think we're gonna get along just fine. Okay, so main life, is it's... my TV show. Okay. Yeah. Okay, in Arabic, you saying? Yeah, and my name's Aaron. Okay, so in yeah. Arabic. شاهدوا البث المباشر لبرنامج مين ونحن نحب ايرين جدا. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. I've said I've said like watch the main life and where we when we love Erin too much. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. An echo of an echo is the semblance of a sound And I've pressed and I've waited with my ear upon the ground Oh lover, I'll see you there Waiting in the willows with your autumn hair Oh lover, I'll see you there After many Today is a really special day because we're launching Incomer Web, which is a county to county website that my goal is to unify the state with a better view of immigrants and their value here. So this is a big issue. I mean, Out of nowhere, right? We had no idea what I was doing. I mean, I'm here like, you are. there I, yeah. <laughs> so what's your story? Um, originally from Iran, came here as an immigrant refugee. But I, I'm a salesperson. I like opening businesses and, and watching them grow. I like watching people invest their time and making it grow from nothing. And I'm an engineer, so it's a completely different thing. But I used my engineering. <laughs> I used my engineering to like help me to get the people out of here. And uh, to, to a mirror bread and make some money. And how's it going? It's going very well. My extended family owns a Chinese restaurant on Brighton Ave. And, you know, we've experienced our share of discrimination, of bullying, things like that. After the issue for Cumberland County went on the PDF and it, it was digitally viewed, there was an influx of emails from counties all over the state wanting to highlight their, their immigrants and their incomers because you know the state has a workforce issue. It's not just a Cumberland County issue, it's a statewide issue. And I think this magazine can fill a lot of holes. I'm passionate about it now because I think it's important to give a voice to those who have been voiceless for so long. This community could totally just explode because we are, we do love our immigrants. We just don't know how to show it. It's like that parent, you know, that loves their kid and doesn't know how to show them and doesn't know how to integrate that. And I think we need to do that with our incomers because we're running out of time. Basically, I'm from Iraq, which is hot and a dry weather. And here it's wet and cold. So there is a big, like, difference. I mean, the transition was very hard for me. Since the first step in Portland, in a, like, uh, uh, like PWM, I felt that everybody was smiling and I was
talking to my friend. I had a, like a friend from Africa, and I told him, "Do we have anything like wrong in our faces? Because everybody was smiling. So maybe there's something like dirt or something like that." So he said, "No, they must be really good people." So yes, I, I felt very welcome here and here, and uh, here we are. Let's talk about some, you know, uh, like finger food. So we have some like uh, types of samosa in here. We have uh, beef samosa. We have chicken samosa. Uh, this is Arabic baklava. Uh, this is with cashews. This is with cashews, and this is with walnuts, and this is bird nest with oh. a pistachios. Yeah. Okay, can mm -hmm. I try the Arabic one? No, you can try them both, no. actually. <laughs> yeah. Welcome yeah. to Maine. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you for this. Yeah, and I'm a proud Mainer, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, everybody, and welcome to Waterville. Sitting here with my friend Andrew Silsby of Kennebec Savings Bank, uh, and we're here at the Proper Pig. We're going to have lunch in a minute and tell you more about the name and introduce you to the owner. But we are here in Waterville, Andrew. We, as you drive by, we see your um, Kennebec Savings sign here. So you are invested in this community. We are very much invested as a community bank. We. We try to be involved in a lot of things that are going on in central Maine, and, and Waterville's a great community. There is a lot going on here. There is, there is. We're going to have a good day today. Yeah, so tell us what's on the agenda. Okay, so we're going to go out to the quarry, uh, quarry trails mm -hmm. and out on Quarry Road, and we're going to start there. We're going to meet the executive director out there, and we're going to walk a few trails. I think that'll be fun. Then we'll come back into the river walk. Uh, which is going to be a waterfront park that's under construction right now. Going to meet Coming with Mike soon. Roy. Yeah, he's the uh, he's the city manager here, and and some of the other folks. Uh, so I think that will be fun. And then then we're going to go to the Waterville Opera House. So you're a big is, supporter of the arts. We are very much so, and I think the Opera House uh, is just a really ornate theater that I think uh, you'll really like. And we'll meet some folks there. Very good. I've all, I haven't spent a lot of time here, so I'm excited to check it out. Yeah. And our furry friend Baxter's joining us. Oh, great. <laughs> hey, hey. Cheers to a good day. I'm a proud sponsor of the Maine Women's Lobby. I'm Seth Rigoletti, leadership coach, and I want to thank the Maine Women's Lobby for their continuous leadership and empowerment of Maine women and girls. There were a number of us that had been, been involved in passing the Equal Rights Amendment in Maine. We spent a lot of time in the legislature and we saw what could happen if you could be there and lobby legislators for something that you wanted. So a small group of us got together and said, not again, we need to have a presence for women and girls in the State House. We formed the Maine Women's Lobby. I think the need is really critical. I think that once you, once you back off, once you don't have a presence, once you don't uh, show that there are numbers that support what you want to do, then it becomes less important to a lot of people um, and they move um, their energies in those areas that have a, have a voice. I, I think women having a voice and the lobby providing that avenue for them is, is critical. We are at the Quarry Road Recreation Area in Waterville, Maine. Have you been here before? I have been here in the wintertime, but not in the summertime. And so do you have a lot of um, hikers and bikers? We do, yeah. We'd like to have a little more this time of year, but it, it's still a little wet. So I think over the next couple of weeks, as things dry out, we'll get very busy. So this is 200 acres? It's about 230 acres now, yeah. Wow. We acquired a little more land a couple of years ago. So yeah, about 230. Right in the heart of the city. Right, yeah. Just down below Colby College, just off the highway. The area got started really based on a cross-country skiing um, situation. We had John Morton design our trails. We've got almost 11 kilometers of trails now, super wide, 20 feet wide trail, 20 foot wide trails. We groom them every day. We have a great snowmaking system, state of the oh, art, cool. state of the art snowmaking system, not unlike what they have at Sugarloaf and Sunday River, only a lot smaller. Sure. We've got great, you know, the, the newest, best pumps, guns. Wow. We pull water from the stream here goes up to the maintenance building and we've got a buried line that goes through the field and up the trails for water and air. Um, cool. so, in the, so that's how the infrastructure got put in place through the Nordic skiing and we got a couple big grants from the Alphon Foundation 
that helped get us going. But now we're building new mountain bike trails, um, a pump track for mountain bikes. Canoeing and kayaking has just begun to become very popular because of the stream. So really, you know, all kinds of potential out here for outdoor recreation. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Where? Really? Cool. Just for the shot. Right. <laughs> Good thing I'm holding Baxter <laughs> so he doesn't picked get right picked up. up. <laughs> Let's um, continue our walk. Baxter's probably ready to get off the stock. Yeah. Real lucky to have a great group of volunteers that have come back over the years. We lose some one year, we get a couple um, new ones the next year, but we've got a great core. So I'm going to say 80% of the hours that were open in the winter time, it's staffed by volunteers. Very, wow. very lucky to have that support. So when did you get the yurt? About eight years ago, we got the yurt. Yeah, and it was it was real novel at the time, and now you know, there's a lot of them around. But it serves its purpose very well. Very affordable, easy to heat, yeah. um, and it accommodates as many people as we need it to. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Another gem here yeah. in Maine. It is right. dog friendly. Totally dog yeah, friendly. Max. Lots of dog walkers. It's true. Yeah. yeah. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Good yeah. To see nice, you. nice to meet you. Our next stop. <laughs> Where are we going? Uh, <laughs> our next, our next, our next stop, stop. Our next stop is Riverwalk. I mean, Baxter is so excited. He's so hardly excited. wait. <laughs> so we're gonna get out of the river, the All Kennebec right. River. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> so is this the beginning of our journey here? Well, yes, it is. This is the beginning of the area we call Head of Falls. And it's called Head of Falls because the Kennebec River drops 18 feet at this point um, between Waterloo and Winslow. It was the site of a real industrial area. And when urban renewal came along in the 1960s, the Wyandotte Woolen Mill, and a lot of other buildings were removed from this area. So it's been vacant since then. And this is really the first time the city has seriously um, invested money here. So, so this is the grand plan when this it's is a grand October 6th, but we'll be able to see right. exactly what it will look like. So, so how long has this been in the works? So well, this, this idea was really first identified in a comprehensive planning process the city went through in 2001, but it sat on the shelf for a very, very long time. And finally, with people help, for like people like Lisa's help, we finally got the idea that we could raise money to get this bill. We started to gather the momentum to envision this park to be what we really wanted it to be, which is aspirational. We want to show people how beautiful our river is now, and we want to showcase downtown. George Mitchell was born here at Head of Falls. This was his family's, uh, that's where his parents moved to as immigrants. Um, they worked in the mill that was here, the Wyandotte Mill. And so when you read his biography, The Negotiator, you hear the stories. First chapter is Head of Falls, the second chapter is Two Cent Bridge. It's all about here. And so you, you walked this or ran this bridge as a little girl? Yeah, as a little girl, <laughs> this was kind of a no man's land. Um, the river was pretty polluted and this ridge, bridge had fallen into disrepair so there were missing pieces. So the challenge as a kid was, would you dare to cross the bridge, which was really scary, because it'd be like a missing piece, and you'd be looking down into the river and the rock. But this is, I love this view. To me, this is, this is, this um, foundation here, this is actually where the factory was. That is the foundation of the factory that once stood there. Um, so we're gonna try to, you know, retain as much of that as we can. Um, and then it also, importantly, links into the kennebec Mesolonsky trail system. This is actually a hub. This bridge is part of a trail. It continues in the Winslow side. So you can actually start there and hike th miles through the area. When we close our eyes and think of October 6th, what are we going to see down here this fall? A lot of people. Well, we're going to see something that looks very similar to this, <laughs> yes. right? That's um, awesome. Yep. Right. We're going to see a lot of people. I think you're right. And this is about, I mean, it's about Waterville's return to the river. So I want, I want to see a lot of families. Right. So I have actually been playing on the Opera House stage since I was like 11. So this is my home away from home. And I went to college in Connecticut for theater and came back home and was fortunate enough to get a job here and have been the box office manager, the stage manager, the scenic painter, 
Um, I've done a little bit of everything here. Right. So. Now but, executive director. And now I'm the executive director. And that's kind of yeah. how you start, right? You yeah, started exactly. from, you were a teller. <laughs> yeah, you just sort of work, work your way up. So this building's been here since 1902? Yes, this is our 116th season. Wow. We're, so we're, we're very old <laughs> and historic. <laughs> but beautiful. But beautiful, yes. Waterville is actually really unique in that we have the largest art museum in the state. We have one of the longest running um, art house cinemas in the state, um, and we are one of the largest theaters in central Maine. Um, so we have a very vibrant arts and culture scene here. We're lucky. How many seats are here? So we have 802 seats now. We can wow. fit up to 810. Um, we used to be a much larger house um, before our first renovation in the 70s. We actually held over 1,000. So it looks in mint condition. So we did a renovation in 2012, oh, which Economic okay. Savings Bank helped with, um, and the so it was a five million dollar renovation, and we did a lot. We restored the interior of the house, did all of the new balcony seats, um, and a lot of technical upgrades. What does it mean to the Waterville community for this to to be right in the center of everything? I think that. My favorite part of the Opera House is all of the people that come together to help us do what we do. Um, we wouldn't be able to put on over 100 events a year if it weren't for our business partners and our volunteers. We have a volunteer base of like 150 people. Wow. Um, all of our actors and dancers are all volunteers. So they're all community, local people, and you'd be amazed at the talent that we have in Waterville and the surrounding area. Good acoustics. Yes, we actually have some. I want, I want to start singing. Yeah. By all means. Get up there. I want to hear it. Um, we have some of the best acoustics in New England. Okay, Aaron. Belt it out. Let's hear what you got. On my own, <laughs> pretending he's beside me. You like the classics. You're not, you're not using that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> So the proper pig, how did you um, decide to name name it that? Um, well, the proper pig was supposed to be Pig's Pub, but my brother-in-law, who has created all the art in the restaurant, um, came up with the logo, and the, the pig had a top hat on it, and then we just came up with We had to move the name over to um, Proper Pig because he looked so proper. Right. So, um, well, here we are. Yeah, so, awesome. cheers to cool businesses. Yes, yeah, thank right. you. To the Proper Pig. Yeah, right, thank, thank you. you. Well, we've been to the opera, the river walk, the quarry trails. I yes. mean, I feel like there's a lot going on. There is a lot yes. going on in Waterville. Yes. Yeah. Have you a seen lot a change? Yes. The yes. Time it, you've been here. Yes, it has been great. Yeah, we had a, a couple stale years there, but now Waterville is it's growing quite fast, actually. It's kind of a classic main town city that uh, suffered from the loss of the mills sure. uh, way back and. It's been climbing its way back, but it's really hit a tipping point just in the last couple of years. Yes. A lot of really good stuff going on here. So tell me about the weekends uh, at the Proper Pig. Uh, the weekends are crazy here at the Proper Pig, I yes. Uh, we've been very fortunate. It's usually a line out the door at oh, by, wow. by 5.30, you know, 6 o'clock, and we've been, um, we've been loving it. Yeah, it's, it's been a big hit the last two years, so. We uh, we hope to continue that. Yeah, and keep changing uh, keep changing our menu here back here in the park. Actually, uh, we throw about four or five concerts a year oh, right here. We rope off this okay. whole thing. Yep, Camden National partners cool. up with us. So uh, um, yeah, have we turned this park into a concert? And Nancy or Tuna? Oh my goodness! I'll have, I'll have to try that next time. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. Yes, awesome. Oh my Thank you. Gosh. Thank yeah. you so much. This looks great. Wow. I might steal um, an onion ring. Yeah. Please, yeah, help yourself. Yeah. So location, 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 right? Yeah. So you get super busy, I'm sure, with the opera we just came from across the street. Absolutely. The opera house is um, it is working for us big time. It, it is great. Great partnership with these guys. We're, um, they do Waterville Rocks out front, so we've uh, uh, we've got their beer garden this year. So oh, they, they they asked us to do that, and uh, it it's been working great. Yeah. You might have to um, expand soon. Or yeah. Open up another. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The demand is high, right? Yeah, yeah, is absolutely. Like the, the hub for Colby students too. Yes, yeah. Um, we've been uh, yeah. Again, very lucky that uh, students seem to really. Uh, really like what we've got going on down here so we've been full uh, with every uh, um, sporting event through yeah. Kobe yeah um, 
I bet. Good beer, good food. Yeah. Bon appetit. What, what more can you ask for? <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah>. Cheers. <laughs> and then we'll yeah. Richard, it's good to be back here at Gritty McDuff's. Always in the old area. port. We'll start with a toast. So 30 years mm. in business. Yep. Wow. You don't look, you don't even look 35. When you're only 27, <laughs> it's hard. But no, we've been, uh, we've been very lucky. To, How old is this mural? I think it was 90 or 91. 91. We knew that we knew Claude Schmutz, who he actually had been a, a bar. He had owned his own restaurant down the street and he had worked at $3 Dewey's. Oh, this was so much fun. He sat, he, he painted while we were open for business. He was drinking beer and painting this, you know, and I'm up, I'm up there. And uh, your hair color is just a little different now. <laughs> yeah, it's a little blonder today than it was. It back is then. the highlights, yeah, yeah. the sunshine. Uh, and he ended up making um, tap handles for us and and for shipyard and and he did a lot of stuff in the beer industry after he did this, so that was fun. Elise, thanks for coming for What's Brewing. Um, unfortunately, I am in the market to buy a house and it is not the time to buy. Um, I know, well, I shouldn't say that to people who are looking for houses right now, but in a recent article that came out in the Press Herald, we're talking 11% increase in our sales in March from 2017, which in Cumberland County, the median price was 264, I think, and it's now 296. What is going on? I know, it, it boggles the mind. Um, it's, the market is really crazy. There are a lot of people looking to buy. They're worried about rising interest rates and so that they're trying to get into the market before the interest rates go even higher. Uh, we've seen them go up about a point in the past uh, year. And then we also have really low inventory. Sellers, for, for a number of reasons, aren't, aren't selling. I, whether it's that they're worried about getting into the market themselves, right and trying to find something and, and shying away from that or you know any number of reasons, political instability, not knowing where the market's going to go. So that combination has just really pushed the prices up and uh, it's, it's been, a little, been a little nuts. And you think a lot more inventory would go on the market because it is spring getting into summer. Are we, what are you seeing? Actually, uh, we have less inventory this April than we did last. We actually have 23% less inventory right now than we did a year ago at this time. So I don't see this changing anytime soon. All of my buyers keep asking me, what's, what's going on? Or when, are the new, when are the listings coming on? Like, are more houses coming? And you know, I hope. So do you see this trend continuing into the future? Or do you think something's going to have to give to kind of mix up the housing market a little bit? I think you'll start to see the interest rates start to slow the buyers down a little bit as they go up. We're expecting, based on forecasts, that they go up another point from maybe four to five in the next year, which really changes the affordability for, for some, especially first-time home. Right. Now, how does this compare from years past? I know we've had a tight housing market for a while now, and have you seen this be more dramatic than in years past, or does it look similar to the past few years? So we really started to see the market start to pick up in 2013. Uh, buyers were finally coming back. The interest rates were really low in the low threes. And that was busy, but the past two years have really been challenging for, for buyers to, to get into the market. And it hasn't gotten any easier, but it was certainly in 2017 at, till now. What advice would you have then if, if somebody was ready to buy a house right now? Go see as many houses as you can so that you know when the right one hits because as soon as that comes on the market, you have about two days to decide whether or not it's the one for you. Get pre-qualified. You need to be pre-qualified so that your lending is ready to go if you want to make an offer. So make sure that's in place before you start seeing houses. You certainly don't want to be in a situation where you find the house you love and you haven't talked to the bank yet. So um, just be prepared. Be prepared and be decisive. Well, you've got a tough job right now. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> it's, it's really hard and it's really stressful, but ultimately it's, it's really rewarding when a seller is able to meet a financial goal by selling their home or when a buyer really finds the perfect house. Right. You know, sometimes it's not price, it's, it's home. Mm -hmm. right. so. 
Well, to that, my friend, thank you. We'll check back in maybe in the fall and yeah. hopefully things get a little less yeah, stressful. I hope so. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.